And we're back. And listen, I think a lot of times when we talk about this whole this whole fight against or for the legalization of marijuana, people forget that beyond just the people toking up and getting high every week, that we're dealing with real issues and we're dealing with real problems that marijuana can solve. We're joined um, by MD and PhD candidate Neil Nabar. Welcome to the show, Neil. Thanks for having me, Richard. Appreciate uh, it. And you, got, you recently came up with a report that talks about the benefits of THC, which is the chemical, one of the chemicals that is in marijuana on Alzheimer's patients and how, you know, this can really sort of alter the course of their treatment. Uh, and, 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 you know, I think sometimes, Neil, I got to tell you, I think people miss out on, I think there's those who think that medical, like, you know, they, those who believe in medical marijuana, there's others who are just like, marijuana is awful, it's horrible, it's the worst thing that ever happened to man. What's your take on that? So let me start by explaining what our study actually showed. Um, so our, our study was actually a preclinical study that used uh, cellular models of Alzheimer's disease. Um, and we were able to show that THC did have an effect in uh, halting or reversing Alzheimer's pathology. Um, so Alzheimer's disease is caused by a protein called amyloid beta, which is found in brains of normal individuals. And in Alzheimer's disease, this protein clumps together abnormally. Um, and THC, in really, really small amounts, we're talking nanomolar amounts, is really small amounts of this stuff, uh, halt or reverse this aggregation pathology. So, uh, if I hear this correctly, so, you know, basically what it's doing is it's slowly breaking up the chemicals that cause Alzheimer's disease. So, it's actually not clear. That part actually isn't clear how exactly it's working. Um, and, and researchers are working hard to figure that out right now. But uh, this study, along with a couple others that were recently published, does show that THC, at least in preclinical models, may have some efficacy. So, well, let's talk about that. For, let's unpack that for just a second, if we can. So, when uh, a patient, for example, who has Alzheimer's, who is the, or like the early onset of Alzheimer's, with this, in your study, did you sort of recommend that they did they take a THC pill? Did they smoke it? Did they brew it? I mean, does people get the uh, the metrics here? Unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. So uh, this this study was done at a very preclinical level um, in, a, in a cellular model. Um, and additional research needs to be done to kind of determine the optimal dose, uh, determine what the best method of ingestion would be. Um, dose control is crucial for any drug that you take. Uh, the prime example being warfarin, which is taken by almost 66% of patients with atrial fibrillation. Uh, too much of that drug uh, can kill you with a hemorrhage, and too little of that drug may mean it has no efficacy. Um, and, and the same goes for THC in Alzheimer's disease. There has to be addition, as physicians, it's, it's really our job to kind of weigh the risks and benefits of a potential dose, um, of, especially, with, especially with a drug like THC. Um, and so really what needs to be done is there has to be more research uh, into what would the proper dose be, would it have efficacy in humans. Um, all this work still needs to be done, but what our study did do is it showed a promising compound. Um, it did show something that has the potential to work, uh, something that should be researched further and something that, uh, you know, really could change the lives of Alzheimer's patients with additional research and time uh, being used to develop it into, and, you know, a pill that has some efficacy. So, Neil, tell me now, what are the policy implications for such a finding? Um, if it is indeed found in clinical studies that, you know, small doses of THC um, can really sort of help roll back the impacts of Alzheimer's, like what, what's, the, what's the policy implication there? So if, and of course we're still a little bit, a little while away from that, if it were found at a clinical level um, that THC was able to uh, help Alzheimer's patients, um, I think it would have huge, uh, you know, political ramifications in the sense, that I think right now 23 states have already legalized medical marijuana and, and D.C. Um, it's, it's used for the treatment of pain um, in cancer patients, for the treatment of chronic pain, um, as well as for nausea and vomiting. Um, and so there is some evidence that uh, TH, uh, the marijuana can, um, which is sold as dronabinol, um, can actually help patients. And if it is found that THC can help Alzheimer's disease patients, uh, I think that it's more evidence that, you know, there are some benefits of THC. Now, let's just, uh, let's talk about that for just a second, right? So this idea that it can help Alzheimer's patients, but is it also, is it anything, anything in the study sort of found that it's, preve it's a pre it could be a preventative drug as well? So, you know, smoking a little weed throughout your life can stray away the impacts of Alzheimer's? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, <laughs> so that's actually, uh, that, that's actually not what our study found. So, again, kind of going back to the dose control thing, there's a huge difference between smoking marijuana 
and taking it in a very controlled fashion at the optimal dose. Um, there have been some studies showing that you know there are some negative effects of smoking marijuana, um, and it, there's really no evidence to show that it has a preventive effect uh, in Alzheimer's disease. Um, our study, what it showed was that it may reverse Alzheimer's pathology after it's already started. Um, and so from that point of view, no, we're definitely not saying, you know, go light up right now to prevent Alzheimer's disease in 50 years. But what we are saying is that uh, THC maybe, or, or it could serve as a lead compound for a, one of its derivatives, um, could end up becoming a drug that would treat Alzheimer's disease after it's already set in, with, if more clinical studies were to show that. And I hear that, and I totally, I mean, I think that's one of those things that really makes sense. I mean, my, my great aunt died of Alzheimer's, and I totally understand the, 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 the just the drastic downward spiral of that disease and how it can really impact and, and you know, change all, pretty much alter somebody's life. Um, and, 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 I mean, where do, where do you, what, what's next for you guys? What's next for you, Neil, uh, on this study? So next from the study is uh, we want to do some more work. We want to ramp up. We want to ramp up what we're doing. We started in cellular models, and uh, next we're looking to move into some mice models of Alzheimer's disease. Um, Dr. Chun Hai Chow, who is the lead author of this study and has a lab down at the USF Bird Alzheimer's Center, is currently working on a drug cocktail um, that includes THC and a couple of other components that showed efficacy against Alzheimer's disease. Um, and he right now he's testing that. Uh, in cellular models and is hoping to move to mice models of the disease very soon. Um, other researchers, uh, there's a report recently published maybe about three to four weeks ago that showed that in mice, uh, THC marijuana compounds might actually have some effect in reversing pathology. And eventually the goal is to move into clinical type studies uh, with, with patients. And when you say pathology, you know, just for those our, our audience out there, what does what does that mean for for you know those folks who have parents or I mean, just I, I want to make sure that people totally understand what this study shows. So, so when you say pathology, what are you sort of saying to the American people? So what we're saying is that uh, I mean, there are certain things in Alzheimer's disease that cause people to lose their memories. There are that we talked about amyloid beta. We talked about um, some of the uh, amyloid beta, which which aggregates together and forms these clumps. There's still a lot that we don't know about Alzheimer's disease, otherwise we'd already have a cure, right? Um, and at this point, what our study showed is that it can reverse some of the hallmark changes that happen in Alzheimer's patients in cells. Um, and what that means is that we need to work this up, uh, see, see if it has some efficacy at the clinical level. Uh, THC or its derivatives um, you know, may be useful in treating the disease. Unfortunately, I can't say that we're quite there yet. but you know, it shows some promise. And in the future, it's a study like this that kind of uh, catapults um, a, a drug into, you know, into the market eventually. Well, I mean, listen, and the truth of the matter here is, Neil, is that, you know, and I, my personal political opinion is that we should legalize marijuana, but that's just here, that's just us here at the Fowler Show talking amongst friends, right? And, you know, I, I totally get it. And I think studies like this and this ideal of really sort of uncovering the mysteries behind THC and the impact that it can have, the, the benefit that it can have for millions and millions of Americans sort of speak to why it is so important that we really have a conversation in this country that sort of throws out this whole notion and ideal of what we saw in you know the late 70s and the, the, the late 70s and, and this war, Nancy Reagan's war on drugs where drugs no matter what they were were bad unless we could find a way to tax them. There, there is a conversation that needs to be had there and I, and I think it is starting to be had now and I, I'm speaking more towards uh, the use of medical uh, marijuana and because that, that's my primary area of expertise. For sure, uh, totally, totally and hear that. <laughs> from, from that point of view uh, there have been people who have come out in, in support of it, and I'd say the most prominent being Sanjay Gupta very recently. Um, and so I, I think the conversation is started, is now starting to be had kind of at the national uh, national level, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see where it goes over the next couple of years. And where do you think it should go, Neil? You know, uh, I think that at this point, um, I think it has, it's shown that medical marijuana is useful for certain conditions. Um, and so I, I'm, I may be a proponent of you know, for, for specific conditions, um, it being okay, as it is in 23 states uh, and D.C. Um, and as more additional research comes out uh, that THC may be useful against other diseases, um, you know, those diseases should be added to kind of the list of indications for, for something like THC.
Well, Neil, I got to tell you, your work, the work you're doing at the USF is absolutely amazing. We're so happy you could be on the show with us today because truly, if we're going to find a cure to Alzheimer's, we've got to look and we've got to go under every rock and we've got to search through every crevice to find it. Dr. Neil Nabarro, thank you so much for being on The Fowler Show. And as always, you can watch The Fowler Show by subscribing to our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash Fowler Show, or catch us on the radio. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go anywhere.